Hi there, it's Bill with Smart Trades, and it's Friday, October 15th. It's about 10.40 a.m. Pacific Time, and I'm uh, going to try to get this video done before uh, we get out of the uh, what I call the lunch hour. It actually probably is a two-hour period up until 11 or so Pacific. Um, and anyway, uh, interesting uh, chart that I've been looking at, at least to me, is the dollar index. Um, I've kind of not, I've put the dollar on the back burner here for a bit since the decline has been so steep, but uh, uh, looking at the longer term picture, this is the dollar cash index going back to about uh, 1980 or so. And you can see a pretty well defined uh, uh, wedge shape uh, declining pattern and uh, on diminishing uh, momentum. Um, the cash doesn't show uh, volume. Uh, in my data. At any rate, uh, there are a variety of ways to count this. It's possible you can count this entire decline as a giant ABC uh, that has already bottomed, uh, or perhaps uh, that uh, this is still a part of that wave C. But I prefer to count this as a wedge, and uh, th there's a variety of ways to count the wedge too. We could yet still pop out of here and go up and test the top of this channel that connects the high and the B wave. but. For now, uh, I'd like to look at the possibility that uh, D of this wedge is indeed a, a triangle itself. Now, here's just th this is the same chart. It's just a little closer uh, view. And again, here is uh, our potential triangle formation. You can see we're coming up on the lower end of those uh, 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 trend lines. And we counted A, B, C. This would be D, and then E of D, if you will. Uh, back up to the top of this channel. Now again, it, it's certainly possible that this is going to uh, resolve itself in some other fashion and pop up above here. Um, but uh, the, the key at this point is to watch these recent uh, lows and uh, recent highs. If we exceed them, uh, the triangle uh, is, is done. It's not a, uh, no longer a possibility. So uh, watch that uh, late uh, 2009 low and the 2010 high as the limits of this triangle. Now here's a, again the same chart, uh, looking at it on a weekly and uh, closing in and again here's our A, B, C, D, E back up. Uh, the top of that channel is going to come in probably by the time we get there around the 86, 87 area. So if, and again, if we hold this area here here, this is a possible scenario that there's a, a, a triangle formation uh, in force. And again, same data, but looking at it on a daily, you can see off of the C wave, we've got um, what I call an ABC down, similar length uh, legs, similar uh, 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 angle of descent. Uh, and we're coming up almost perfectly on that lower uh, trend line. Now again, if we break through there, and particularly if we break through the previous low, uh, that would kill the triangle pattern. And going even into greater detail, this is the hourly chart, and uh, you know, for now I'm calling this a wave four here, and you can see off of there a pretty clear five wave structure down and an actual increase in volume as we bounced off of that low. Uh, this it's possible to count this as a, a five of a five, and here indeed is the uh, 240 minute chart, and here's that one down, uh, two back up, three. This is the four in the previous chart, and what's inter interesting at this point, not only uh, do we have that five wave structure to uh, to that new low and the good volume on the bounce back up, but if you uh, compare wave one down to uh, this fifth wave, you'll see they're approximately equal. Uh, and uh, that's a, uh, one of the basic uh, tenets of Elliott Wave is that oftentimes, particularly if the third wave is extended, that one and five will tend towards equality. Now, that said, uh, there's a whole variety of ways you can count this decline between uh, wave two and wave three. Um, I think it's possible to count it as a, uh, you know, as a five-wave structure complete. Uh, and uh, the bottom line is, you know, at this point we have a, we have a nice uh, pattern to watch. What I would look for here is corrective declines in the dollar. 
and then look for uh, low risk places uh, uh, where it, it would be tradable. Um, and uh, also look for confirmation, uh, a break above uh, this fourth wave around 78 or so, perhaps a little higher, is, is going to help confirm that the dollar index has actually bottomed. Um, what's probably a likely scenario is that we'll bounce up a bit, come down a bit in a wave two, and that could coincide with uh, the w a wave four decline and then a fifth wave rally perhaps in the Dow. Now, I'm uh, th again, I've emphasized this many times, I'm less than certain about this count off of uh, the late August low. Um, I don't think it's uh, completely clear. Uh, all the counts I've seen are somewhat forced, and indeed even this one uh, is a little bit forced, uh, you know, more so than I would like. It's not a, a really super clear-cut count. That said, the perfect target for a, a, a a B wave, and again, uh, if you look at our longer term videos, we think that this is C of a B wave is actually the top of uh, th the beginning of A. That would be around the uh, uh, 11,258 level basis, the, uh, the Dow, and uh, ideally uh, we're going to hit there and, and also touch this, uh, this trend line when we get there. Also of note, and uh, this has actually fooled me a couple times here, is that breath ratios are rolling over. If you'll note at the bottom of the B wave here, we actually had bullish divergences. Well, now we're getting bearish divergences. Now, like all divergences, you know, breath divergences can be, uh, you can get false uh, positives, so to speak, or false negatives, as is the case here. And, um, you know, you can have multiple divergences before the market actually rolls over. Uh, so, uh, that said, I'd watch it carefully as we p uh, test those April peaks around that 11,258 level. And also, one last thing, uh, the NASDAQ uh, gapped up today uh, on Google's uh, uh, strong gap to the upside. And uh, you can count to this point, and I think this is consistent with the idea that the Dow also has one more high, one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five of three. Uh, ideally, we're going to go uh, sideways to lower for a few days, perhaps back to 2040, 2050, and then go to one more new high uh, before we, we see a peak. Uh, as always, we'll take it one step at a time. I certainly uh, wouldn't throw uh, um, sell orders in front of this market. I'd wait to see uh, you know, how it pans out a bit. But uh, I think we're at an interesting juncture here, and uh, finally the dollar is also uh, perhaps uh, coming into play uh, as it has in the past. And, and if the dollar is going up, it's likely at least in the near term the stock market's going to go down. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend if I don't talk to you. Bye-bye.